Now, the reason I'm making these videos is to try to help people understand what CNC is capable of and just how easy it is to really get into it. Uh, a lot of people online, they don't explain it. They just show you a machine and they're like, yeah, I'm a CNC Jedi. You can't do that. Well, the truth is you can do it. You just need a little bit of guidance in the right direction. And that's what I want to help people see is that it's not all that hard to do. So CNC ushers in a new era of precision for the hobbyist. I mean, you can create very intricate, very detailed parts that are impossible to build by hand with just a few clicks of the mouse. And it allows you to have a lot of design possibilities. If you think about it, if you spend two hours designing something on paper, and then you go and you go and you spend ten hours trying to build it, you've just spent five times longer building it than you have designing it. It should really be the other way around. You should spend ten times designing it, and you know, and then you should spend a considerable amount more time designing it than you should building it. And that's what you can do with a CNC. You can put a part in it. You put your stock in there. Put the bit in it. Program in the uh, correct sequence from the software. I'll show you how to do that in later videos. And you click a button, and then you can come back a few hours later. So uh, right now the uh, machine, it's, um, it's cutting uh, some wooden circles. Uh, these were supposed to be 60mm uh, tube holders, but um, I just uh, put them in, I just threw them in the board so you uh, could get a demo of what it can do. It's, uh, it's a pretty capable machine. I've had this thing running for up to 12 hours sometimes and it, it, it runs. Definitely takes uh, the handwork out of it. So the router is controlled by this computer right here. It's nothing special. It uh, runs Ubuntu Linux and something called EMC, which is Enhanced Machine Controller Software. It's 100% free. It's open source. You can download it right now. And it's not that hard to set up. A little unuser friendly. This is the parallel cable uh, on the computer. And this cable is responsible for sending the signals that actually pulse the motor. So it's, it's a crucial cable. Then you have the driver box, and inside that box is where all the electrical circuitry is that actually drives the motors. So you've got your large power supply. It's a 40 volt power supply, 10 amps. It's pretty beefy. Then we switch into the actual top of the box. Now, if you look at the three circuits down below near the aluminum heat sink, those are your drivers. Those Each one is for an individual axis of the machine, X, Y, and Z. Uh, and that breakout board breaks out the parallel pins to protect the computer in case there's a short. And then the board on the far right with little blue boxes on it, that one is a relay board that controls the router. So if you look on the very back of the machine, you can see the XLR connectors where you can connect the stepper motors. And you'll see them right here. You connect the X, Y, and Z axis. Now, this is the X axis motor the y-axis motor and coming up here is the z-axis motor underneath the machine is the x-axis lead screw and it runs into the block the the nut block which actually moves the x-axis notice the two uh, metal bars in the left and right those are really hefty a lot of cheap machines don't have that it's critical same thing on the y-axis you can see it right here those bars are very important. On my machine, they're made by Thompson Precision, or uh, they make very nice stuff. Cheap machines will skip out on that. Now, this is the um, anti-backlash nut that the lead screws drive. This pr this reduces backlash. It doesn't eliminate it, but it brings it a lot less than a regular nut would. So you see, and this is the nut broken apart. This is critical. A lot of cheap machines just skimp on this. It's an easy way to save money, and you really need it. Each axis moves around. It's a very fluid motion, and it's very precise. 
So you can see uh, the lead screw actually driving from the stepper motor. It is a dirty lead screw, it's got to be clean, but... Yeah. So now I'm going to talk about the types of uh, spindles and the bits and the other accessories that you can get on it. So your cutting tool is extremely important, and if you can get it, get a large router, because this is, this is a palm router, this thing will chew through anything. Don't go with a router or a machine based on Dremel, it's junk. So as you see, the bit is not in what you would normally expect a bit to be in. Most people are going to expect a bit to be in a Jacobs chuck like this. This is not what you use for machining. Never do that. It's not made for lateral stress. Or this. Same thing, except it's keyless. These are not made for machining. They're made for drilling. Big difference. So this is the uh, collet holder uh, nut. You bite it precise bits, and that's the inside of it. This is what you use to actually hold your bits. Now, inside of it, this small thing fits, which is called a collet, and it's basically a piece of metal that as you push it, it'll clamp a metal thing inside. So now the collet is in the collet holder, and it snaps in, and you can see it from the other side. And you put a bit inside that hole, and then when you tighten it onto the shaft of the router, it will actually auto-center the bit and the bit will be clamped down with a lot of lateral, uh, it, it'll be able to take the lateral forces from milling. Or not milling, routing. But uh, Now this is the uh, end mill bit. This one's made for routing metal, but um, it, it works for soft materials. This is a soft media, media end mill. Um, so this is the box that I created for my machine. The biggest problem with a router is they make a lot of dust. So you'd see, I, I made a big, it's pretty spacious in there. Uh, you don't want a small box because you'll get screwed over. Uh, you know, I put lights in it um, and a port for a vacuum cleaner to suck out the dust. I also put in the light switch on the side, the box on top, and you know, all, that, all the stuff is on top. And the most important thing, never forget this, is an emergency stop switch. This will save you from breaking something or hurting a part or something like that. If something goes wrong, you just push the button. Stop. So that concludes part one. Uh, part one was only intended to be just an introduction for those that are not, don't have a CNC machine or had just, you know, visual learners, have a lot of pictures, go back and look through them. Uh, has a lot of information if you, you know, haven't seen too many CNC machines or how they work. But, um, Part two is going to be much more in-depth software-wise. I'm going to dive into the programs, and I'm going to show you how to take a concept, make a, th uh, make a 3D model in uh, Inventor, which is what I use. Um, then I'm going to show you how to take it, put it into a CAM program, create the instruction code you need for the machine. And then in part three, I will show changing the correct bits and setting up a machine and then finally machining it. Then I will have other videos later on that um, will deal with individual tasks like machining aluminum and different, uh, different less common tasks. So uh, just check in the related videos for more parts to this uh, series. And uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. I'll get back to you really fast. Uh, comment, message.